Hey guys, my name is uh, Fox Cotton. Um, <laughs> like you said, I'm six foot six, two fifteen. Um, I go to Greenwood. I play soccer and football for Greenwood Bulldogs. Um, before I get into the message, I'd like to go ahead and pray over this service. Lord, I thank you for this night. I thank you for this opportunity that I get to be able to spread the word with uh, fellow believers. I pray that you would give me and my fellow uh, speakers the right words to say to speak to these um, these peers that we have. Um, I pray that you would just bless this word that we're giving tonight in your name. Amen. Amen. A few of y'all might know my good friend Austin Brown, but what many of y'all don't know about us is that we used to be aspiring YouTubers. Um, <laughs> Austin and I used to film and record challenge videos together. One day we went on a trip together to Hot Springs. We had rented an Airbnb for the week for our two families to stay at and relax together. One of the days that we were there, Austin and I had an idea. We were going to re record and film a uh, challenge video that we would post on YouTube. The challenge was last to leave the pool would win um, the challenge and some money that we uh, decided to bet. I made a deal with Austin that I wouldn't get out of the pool until he was sure that we wouldn't uh, be able to last any longer in the pool. We stayed uh, around 10 hours in the pool that day throughout rain and uh, sunshine. We missed several meals, but we refused to leave without the other. We came out absolutely burnt. We were burnt for at least a week and a half, but we did learn that we were able to hold each other accountable and persevere through tough times together. Have you ever had a friend that was like family to you, always there for you when you need it most, checking up on you, holding you accountable, and loving you like a brother or sister? Having friends like this feels so good, knowing they will be there for you through hard times and help you get through it and grow together. One thing you have to know is this. You have blind spots in your life that you'll never see or know about until you have friends close enough to see what you're doing wrong and not doing as well as you should be, and that are also close enough with you that they tell you about those areas in your life that you can improve in. You also need to have covenant relationships through God, as they are oftentimes most, the most reliable friendships or relationships that you could have. They also typically last the longest out of any rela relationship. <sighs> a covenant relationship is one that <laughs> is based on commitment and not feeling. It takes work, but it is vital if you want to be healthy in your faith. A covenant relationship says, I'll never do anything to hurt you, and you'll never do anything to hurt me. It also says... I'll do everything I can to help you, and I know you'll do everything that you can to help me. That's what the connection between David and Jonathan looked like in the Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 3 says, Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Who in your life loves you as their own soul? That is a covenant friendship built upon God's foundation and love for us. Jonathan and David loved each other more than just family, but loved each other as themselves. If you ever had a relationship with someone that wasn't built or centered around Christ or a strong love for each other, you know how difficult it can get or how easily it may fail. Remember that guy Austin I was talking about earlier? He's the most prominent example of a covenant relationship in my life. Austin's been there through the ups and downs of life. We've moved uh, many states together and gone on many trips together. He's been like a brother to me for years. One thing that I've noticed about Austin over the years is that he truly cares about me and seeing me grow in Christ. Although we moved to Little Rock a few years ago, he still regularly texts me and asks how I'm doing on my walk with Christ. And if I tell him I'm struggling or straying even the slightest bit, he, chops, or he helps to try to get me right back on track with Christ. He genuinely wants to see me in heaven one day, and that is the kind of friendship everyone here needs. He keeps me accountable when I'm veering off of the right path, as any good covenant friend should and will do if you choose your friends wisely. We're all called by God to be friends just like he is with other people around you. I once heard somebody say, true friendship is a sacred covenant, a bond forged in the fire of mutual respect, trust, and love, where souls unite to uplift, challenge, and celebrate each other's journeys towards the divine. This is talked about in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the book of Proverbs, we find wisdom regarding the importance of accountability and friendships. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. That's from Proverbs 27:17. This verse beautifully captures the importance of covenant friendships. Just as iron sharpens iron, so do faithful friends sharpen one another through encouragement, correction, and support. If you don't have anyone like this in your life, then I have some good news for you. 1 John 3, verse 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. 
When you get saved, you become part of God's family. It doesn't matter if you grew up with a million siblings or as an only child. When you become a part of God's family, he gives you brothers and sisters. Look around you. These people are like your brothers and sisters in Christ, your spiritual family. That means there are people in God's family oh, uh, that can be like an older brother or sister that's already been through some stuff. A good, a good older brother like me, of course, uh, I look out for my sister sometimes. I wanted to do well, so I've gone through something. Uh, so if I've gone through something, I can be a good older brother, uh, tell her, warn her, help her, guide her. Not that I always do, but I try. That's what you need in God's family, an older brother or an older sister who can help you, teach you, and guide you, and keep you out of trouble. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to go after covenant relationships, but it's worth it, and you need it. Ugh, need it. Oh, God. Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted. This verse implies that anyone living and living in and with Christ, should be able to try to let people know when they fall short of God's glory, which will happen to everyone, and try to help them through it and enable them to fix it and move past it. But they must also have enough self-control to avoid temptation and do the same as their acquaintances. Ultimately, the goal of covenant friendships and accountability is to bring glory to God. When we commit ourselves to walking obedience and accountability with our brothers and sisters, we reflect the unity and love of Christ. No, 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 no. The Lord is good, amen.